In a previous video on solar PV installation, we ended up with a problem. The PV string insulation test results in our small installation here at Lineside Studios were inconsistent to say the least. In certain test cycles, the insulation readings fell below the required one mega ohm pass limit specified in the IEC and BS standards, resulting in a test failure. Now, we're lucky here that our test installation comprises only six ground mounted panels and it's easy to access all of the solar modules and connections. It's a different situation, however, for many roof mounted installations where you'd need to remove the panels from the mounting system to access the connectors, or perhaps you're dealing with a solar farm comprising of thousands of panels where tracking down that fault could be like finding a needle in a haystack. Thankfully, there is a quick way to identify the location of insulation faults using this PV isotest instrument from TIS. So let's dive straight in and see how it works. Luckily, I can perform the testing here where it's as dry as a British sense of humour. So firstly, I'm going to check the insulation resistance of our system. Our nominal string voltage here is around 230 volts under standard test conditions. So therefore, I'm going to follow the IET guidance given in the code of practice and set our voltage at 500 volts DC with a minimum resistance of one mega ohm for a pass. The tester itself can support test voltages up to 1500 volts DC, so it is suitable for the very largest of solar installations. The keyboard and connection layout is similar to the PV check instrument we've looked at recently, with strings connected to the positive red terminal and negative black terminal. The green E connection is for our installation earth. We're not using the blue terminal in this test. That's if you're performing a continuity test on those earthing and bonding conductors, which this instrument can of course also conduct as well. Once connected, we select the insulation test setting. We're going to start with the dual mode, which measures insulation resistance between both the positive and negative cables and earth. To start the test, we press and hold the go button for two seconds. As the test starts, we see the test voltage applied to the positive and negative lines. We can also see the voltage being produced by the modules at the same time. And this test is performed under live conditions. You don't have to disconnect the panels. And what would be the point in that? You wouldn't see the insulation of the panels. The test takes around 20 seconds to complete and the results are in. We can see a great result on the positive line with a resistance greater than 100 mega ohms. However, we have a problem on the negative line with a resistance of around half a mega ohm, which has resulted in a test fail. There's also a timed mode of operation that tests the connection between the negative terminal and earth. This test yields two additional measurements, the polarization index or PI and the dielectric absorption ratio, DAR. These tests involve calculating the ratio between an initial resistance value and the one obtained after a longer time period during which the test voltage is applied. I'll leave a link in the description where you can read more about the science behind these tests. However, if you're a seasoned solar module installation tester and can share your experience of how you've used these values in the field, let me know in the comments. But now we'll just accept the numbers as they're not very good and they certainly don't improve the situation with our failed installation. The DAR is listed as a dangerous 1.0 and the PI hovering around a not acceptable value. So we know we have a problem. The challenge now is to find where on our installation it's located. Now we've got a simple installation, but imagine if this was one of those larger rooftop installations, this could be a major mission. Here's where the really clever function in this tester steps in. So let's flip over to the ground fault locator or GFL setting. I'm led to believe ground is what the Americans call earth. So in the spirit of friendship, we'll stick with that while we perform our earth fault location test. On this screen, we can again set the test limit, but we also have to specify the number of solar modules in the string up to a maximum of 35. So again, we'll set the test running but this time the result should tell us exactly where the fault is within our solar module string. Now we can see on the screen that we have a fault in the negative connection leading out to module six. So let's go outside and see if we can find the cause. If we trace the negative cable from module six, we can see what looks like a very suspect 
MC4 connection. The back nut appears to be loose and the golden rule of these connectors has been broken. Now if you'd like to know more about the golden rules and how to make off one of these correctly so this doesn't happen and even how to spot a fake MC4 connector, check out the linked video on screen now. Now I think this PV isotest could really be a lifesaver for solar maintenance and fault finding. I'd be keen to get your thoughts in the comments about what you think about it, along with any experiences you've had out in the field hunting down solar faults. What a clever instrument you are.